the information that you learned about St. Macrina, what would you take from that to pass on to um, young women in our church? Hmm. Or just women in general? Mm -hmm. I think you really have to follow uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It, it wouldn't have been normal for her at 12 years old not to be married. Uh, it wouldn't have been, you know, expected. Uh, it wouldn't have been expected for their family to give so much of their wealth. And I think so as, as young women, we have many voices. There's many voices that tell us, well, you really you know, need to be doing this and this and this. I think we need to take some silence, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow the Holy Spirit, even if that's not what the culture around you is saying. I think that's a big one. Welcome everyone, welcome Bernie. Who are you going to introduce us to today? Uh, I am going to introduce you to St. Macrina, and actually her full name uh, is, she's called St. Macrina the Younger, because her grandmother was St. Macrina the Elder, and she, uh, so she had a saint as a grandmother. Wow. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit about her background? Of course. Um, and I, you know what, I didn't know much about her. Actually, I didn't know anything about her, I have to admit. I was uh, preparing for a presentation at uh, Newman College and I approached Father Stephen and I asked him who he might suggest that I would do a presentation to and immediately he just, oh, St. Macrina, you'll love her. And uh, so I did some research on her and I have to say that I was just really, it was quite enlightening and quite interesting for me and, and also quite shocking to me that I hadn't heard of her before. Because of the influence that she's had on our church and our faith, um, we should all learn a little bit more about her. What was <clears throat> the most striking thing about her that you found out? Um, well, the, it, exactly that. That she had such an influence, yet she didn't write, we have no writings of hers. Yeah. And yet she had such an influence on, how our, uh, on our theology of our, our church because of the, the influence that she had on her family. So as I said, her grandmother was a saint, uh, Saint Macrina. Her mom was a saint, Saint wow. Amelia. But there were 10 children, she was the eldest, and she um, had three brothers that all of us, I'm sure, have heard about. Saint Basil the Great, Saint Gregory of Nyssa, and Saint Peter of Sebasti. So, We've heard of all of them, and yet we haven't heard of her. Oh. And um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about her family. She was born around 327 or 330, and um, it was a well-off family. And then they experienced her grandparents, in the time of her grandparents, they experienced a lot of uh, persecution under Decian. And so they fled to Cappadocia, and their estate was called uh, Anissa. Mm. They maintained their wealth and had a great influence in, in Cappadocia. And then under Emperor Diocletian, again, more Christian persecutions and more people fled. And their family was really um, instrumental in, in helping those uh, Christians who fled. They opened their house to them. They used their wealth, really, for the glory of God. So you can see that, you know, I mean, that, that family who was a powerhouse of saints, you can see that how their environment affected them and how their parents and their grandparents really affected uh, Christianity down the line. Now, as I mentioned, St. Macrina was the eldest of the ten children, and... Um, Although she had no formal education as we know, um, as far as we know, she was well schooled at home in scripture, in the writings of the fathers, and um, she really had an influence particularly on uh, St. Gregory of Nyssa, and um, <clears throat> she taught the children, she guided them, and then even in their older life, 
she was a, a, a real influence on what they did. Now her story is she's around 12 years old, she's betrothed, aged, to a young man and he suddenly dies before they are married. And from that point on she decides, nope, I'm not going to get married, I will give my entire life to God, living an ascetical life and uh, consecrating my whole life to God. And then just after the their the tenth child is born in their family, her dad dies. So now it's her and her mom are virtually the heads of this family. And according to what we have um, <clears throat> written down, she is the main influence on her mom in um, forming what's later to be known as the School of Virtue. So it's a, it's a monastery for women. They live an ascetic life, a life of prayer and a life of service. And you remember, they had a lot of money. So she, they virtually gave up that wealth and gave it entirely to this monastery. As her brothers get older, they, they move away. Um, St. Basil's at one, St. Basil goes to get a law degree and at one point he comes back and um, <clears throat> I'd like to read a little bit of a, a quote about what she says to him because he comes back and she feels like he's a little too puffed up, he's a little <laughs> too big for his britches and, and just like a true sister, uh, she says to him, you know, the trouble with you is that you have too good an opinion of yourself. You think that your knowledge and command of words make you better than other people. You are too much in love with what the world offers. So this actually really affects him and he ends up traveling through the West, going to various monasteries, comes back home and fo forms a monastery on the opposite side of the estate. So she has her monastery for women and he has his monastery for men. Oh, wow. And he's often <clears throat> attributed with kind of founding monasticism, mm -hmm. yet we can see that she kind of was doing it before he did. Yeah. So, um, and then what we do know about her, about her spirituality and her life comes from writings from Gregory of Nyssa. And Gregory of Nyssa really has provided us a lot about the Holy Spirit, about the soul, about resurrection. He wrote a, a document called On the Soul and Resurrection. And really, the whole document is his discussion with his sister as she was dying. Oh, wow. And so what he has learned from her. And it's just so interesting that he calls her the teacher all the, the entire time. She is the teacher. He really attributes um, much of what has developed in him on theology and and as I said, like on the Holy Spirit and resurrection, directly to her. And, and he also ends up writing a biography about her. And, and, and again, all of this material comes from their deathbed conversation right. as, as he talks to her for a few days. So, so you <clears throat> said that she didn't have a formal education. Um, have you found out like who she received the majority of her education from? Well, not really. What we know is it was like from the family. family. So, okay. I mean, her parents and her grandparents were all just faithful Christians yeah. to the end, and, and it was very important for them to have that at home. And you mentioned St. Macrina the Elder. Do you think that she had a significant kind of role in um, St. Macrina the Younger's formation? Uh, for, I, I did read a little bit about it, and yeah, yes, she was very important yeah. um, to St. Macrina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, you would have to have a whole, just a, you know, God-fearing, and when I say God-fearing, that's not being scared of God, that's f understanding the awesomeness of God, mm -hmm. in order to be able to produce so many saints out of one right. family. I mean, it's right. shocking, really, Absolutely. when you think about it. St. Gregory, I just wanted to mention too, because he was a, he was a bishop in Nyssa, and he was also charged with kind of working with the Arian uh, Arian controversy. He was um, uh, embroiled in battle, and Arianism is 
essentially what it does is it denies the divinity of Christ. I mean, it's one could read up on this heresy in the church, but it was his job to to fight against these Arians in the church. And he would come to his sister and ask for her help. And um, <clears throat> one time, and I have another quote for you, she said to him, do you not realize that the prayers of our parents are lifting you on high? For you have little or no native capacity for this. Wow. So she made sure he knew who he was. But also, I just, I just love it because it shows complete trust. I mean, we can do nothing without God. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, a little dig, but it really is telling him, you know, anything that you do, it's the Holy Spirit working through you. And that's when things become fruitful. That's such a beautiful thing to think about and to reflect on in our own lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Um, yeah, what like, and that's a lot of the part that really draws me to her, is her trust and hu her humility. And you know, as I mentioned, it kind of you know I I think yeah, it's too bad that people don't know about her. So I hope that more people know about her. But it also teaches me like humility like we don't have to be center stage to have can, like look at the effect that she has had on the development right. of the christian faith you know from her strength of spirit and her demonstration of trust and who knows the multi-million people that have been affected as it goes down of all the people that you know spent time in the monastery the people that were were there that received their oh, um, for sure. their Christian yeah. love. So that's one of the things that I really, um, you know, kind of have reflected on. That trust, that humility, you don't have to be center stage. Love yeah. it. <laughs> Do you have an icon that you would like to explain? I have three. Oh. Yes. I'm an, a keener. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. la di da <laughs> So we have three icons, and in the first icon, you'll at first and second icons, you'll notice that uh, Saint Macrina is holding a scroll. So when a when we see a saint or uh, in an icon holding a scroll, that shows us that they were known for either prophecy, discernment, wisdom, imparting wisdom to others. And obviously, from what you know, we know yeah. about her life, and we know about. That influence she had on her brother, she she did that. So she's so her hand is is showing us in um, the second icon, like she's actually directing her hand towards the scroll. So she's pointing to us the, to the truth, the wisdom of God. That's that scroll. Um, in the second icon, she's actually holding her hand up towards us, in a kind of in a almost like if she's saying stop. <laughs> But, but when we see uh, saints hold their hands up in that kind of a gesture, what it tells us is, is uh, that it can mean virginity or consecrated life. And we know that she uh, dedicated herself, she consecrated herself to God. She was nary, never married. She lived a celibate life and the, and the monastic life. I really like the third icon because in it she's holding the icon of her brothers. Oh, wow. Yeah, and on it, it says, the teacher. So St. Macrina, the teacher, and she's holding her brothers. Well, what does that tell us? I mean, she's holding them up. Yeah. But it, that's what she did in life. She held them up. She supported them and uh, gave them the strength. And I, I think all of our prayers in, in life should be, you know, that we can provide that support for others. Absolutely. And what else can I tell you? Oh, her feast day is July 19th. And do you have a prayer to St. Macrina or about her? I actually have a prayer as recorded by St. Gregory of Nyssa from her deathbed. Okay. So this is actually her deathbed prayer. And it's, it's a little bit long, but it's quite beautiful. So I'd like to share that with you. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have released us, O Lord, from the fear of death. You have made the end of life here on earth a beginning of true life for us. You let our bodies rest and sleep in due season, and you waken them again at the sound of the trumpet, the last trumpet. You entrust the earth, you entrust to the earth our bodies of earth, which you fashioned with your own hands, and you restore again what you have given, transforming with incorruptibility and grace what is mortal and deformed in us. You redeemed us from the curse and from sin, having become both on our behalf. You have crushed the heads of the serpent who had seized man in his jaws because of the abyss of our disobedience. You have opened up for us a path to the resurrection, having broken down the gates of hell and reduced to impotence the one who had power over death. You have given to those who fear you a visible token, the sign of the Holy Cross, for the destruction of the adversary and for the protection of our life. God eternal, upon whom I have cast myself from my mother's womb, whom my soul has loved with all its strength, to whom I have consecrated flesh and soul from my infancy up to this moment, put down beside me a shining angel to lead me by the hand to the place of refreshment, where the water of repose where is the water of repose near the lap of the Holy Fathers? You who have cut through the flame of the fiery sword and brought to paradise the man who was crucified with you, who entreated your pity, remember me also in your kingdom, for I too have been crucified with you, for I have nailed my flesh out of reverence for you and have feared your judgments. Let not the dreadful abyss separate me from your chosen ones. Let not the slanderer stand against me on my journey. Let not my sin be discovered before your eyes, if I have been overcome in any way because of your nature's weaknesses and have sinned in word or deed or thought. You who have on earth the power to forgive sins, forgive me so that I may draw breath again and may be found before you in the stripping off of my body without stain or blemish in the beauty of my soul. But may my soul be received blameless and immaculate into your hands as an incense offering before your face. Amen. Stem from that great love that she had for the Blessed Sacrament, our Lord in the Eucharist. 